Hi, my name is Leia. This is my story about being trans, having borderline and having autism. I live in Malmö. I'm originally from Denmark and I have been living in Sweden for 20 years. I have some mental illnesses. Uh, I have borderline and I have autism. And those things are connected with my trans identity. And it's, it is not always clear how they do, but I got some idea how it connects, but it does. Leia has a lot of different engagements in the queer community. She is a board member for the local branch of the Swedish Federation for LGBTQI Rights. They run an Instagram account called Share Your Trans Story and is also the middle hand between the churches and this queer association of her city. We won't really get into that in this video, I just wanted to give you some context of who we're talking to in this video. Let's get to know them a little bit better. When Leia describes what it means being transgender, they divide it into three different parts. The first one being identity. My trans identity is, it's difficult uh, in a way because the first couple of years I just thought, okay, I want to be a woman, I, I like a binary woman. And when I first realized that, it was like, no, not really. Maybe I'm a gender because I don't always fit in that category of, of women. I don't always see myself in that role. So I've, I've landed in this queer identity that is gender fluid or gender flux. It's not like two fixed points and I'm, like, I flow between those fixed points. That is somewhat from not always, not all the way female and not the whole way. Sometimes it's a bit to the, to the masculine side, but not always either. So it's like a gender, it's, it's, it's kind of flowy and organic and grows. It grows as I grow as a person. <laughs> Leia has a theory of how identity is created. I think it, identity is created when you mirror yourself in other people. And when I don't get, get a clear reflection back, I can't see myself as that person. So when I was bullied in school or when I didn't get accepted or acceptance from my family or my friends in, in back in Denmark, I don't see myself as, as that person and that creates my trans identity. So in a way my autism affects that I don't connect with these people and that creates a sense of not belonging. And, and when I, I mirror myself in females or AFAP persons or non-binary people, I often get this reflection back. I can see myself in that role because they, they have a personality that is more like my personality and I feel comfortable. And that's how I know that I'm like that person, but I'm not like that person. So the first part about being trans, according to Leia, was identity. And now we get to the second part. But it's also how do I want my body to look like and what body would I be comfortable in? I didn't realize for 30 years that wow, you can actually do this, you can change your body, you can have boobs, you can get a pussy, you can actually do these things. And it amazed me that you can actually do this. You know this stupid straight cis question you, you get when you're like 15 and it's, if you woke up in the, in the other sex's body, what would you do for that day? And that question never left my head and that's a clear indicator of what I want to do with my body. And that I really, really long for, for having another body. The last couple of years I've been, I've actually starting to feel that I belong in my body and that I see myself as sexy and I see myself as desirable and I see myself as, damn, I look good. And what, a, what cute boobs I got and everything. And when I didn't have this body, when I was in my other body, I was kind of good looking. <laughs> I can see that. But there was not one day in my body that I actually felt that, wow, I'm cute. I look good. It's not that I hated my body. It was just that my belonging in the body wasn't there. There was nothing. And now there's something. Sometimes you don't know how bad a situation is until you get free from that situation and you, you get to a new situation, you get free from that situation, you're in a bad relationship and you get like, what the hell was that relationship all about and why did I accept all these things? And I think it's the same about my body that I, didn't, I never felt home in that body, but I never felt anything and that is wrong to not feel anything in your body. <laughs> the lack of, of feeling about your body, that is not right. 
you should feel something about your body. You should feel joy about it and you should feel sexy and you should feel desirable and loved and all those things. And I feel that now and that's an amazing thing to reach. And then we get to the third part about being trans that Leia describes. The thing about being trans is it is, it is not only identity and body but also how you are seen socially and how you're being met and how your needs are being met. The way you are being touched, touched when you have sex, how you connect with that other person means a lot. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> I think it's really, really weird that touch can be gendered and how amazing it, it actually feels to be touched in the right way, to be seen as that, as that person you are. And then we arrive to how her trans identity relates to their autism and borderline. I think when you grow up in an environment and never connects, really, really connects with people and not marrying other people, you create a environment where you easily get depression and you easily get a lack of identity and a lack of how to handle things. So it creates like a a cesspool of mental illness, uh, like borderline and autism. When you're a child, you do things. You learn by mirroring other people. You do what they do. And when people don't show emotions or show other people how to handle, handle emotions, you have no idea how to have emotions. So my idea of emotions and my idea of love and my idea of identity and my idea of a lot of things are based on vague ideas so they either get too little or they are too much so that creates my my borderline and that also creates that that idea that i have no idea who i really am or what i'm comfortable with it left me to, to, to never realize really who I, who I was and what I wanted in life. I kind of knew, but it didn't fit in anywhere. And that's why it took so long for me to, to, to actually realize that I was trans and that I was okay having these ideas and feelings about identity. It's a, it's a shame that it should take that long. And I think that when we talk about mental illness and when we talk about trans identity, when we as older people <laughs> talk about these things, we, we connect with our roots and our roots are the trans kids that grow up and don't have this feeling of belonging anywhere. They can have some support in family and among friends now, but they also need to have a connection with their future in a way that they can see they're not the only one who has been struggling with these thoughts and ideas, but they got this connection. And that connection I never had because trans people wasn't a thing in Western Denmark in, in, in the 90s and 80s. It's tough growing up not having that connection with anything really and just to be left out. And that creates both my identity as, as, as borderline and creates that identity of, of trans person. Leia is happy to provide this connection that she never had while growing up. It feels nice also to be a bit older and, and see myself that okay, I can connect with other people, but other people can also connect with me. I can be a role model for other people in this family. I can take care of other people in this family. And I try to do that as, as often as I can. As a trans person, as a person with mental, mental illness. They have a metaphor that might help us look at our community in a new way. I mean, the trans family is like this huge tree and we have deep, deep roots, and those roots, roots are us older people, but we also are a part of it, part of the, the tr visible tree. And I think it's very important to remember that any family and any family tree, this queer family we are, is we have the same roots and we have the same goal to create an environment where we can grow as a, as a community, but we are also very different as people and we have different opinions about how we do that. And that is important to, to realize. I don't think it's a good idea for us to, to create infighting in the group because it won't help us as a tree to grow, but it's also necessary to understand our, our differences. I try to see the whole community and take care of the entire community and see our needs and 
to see that some part of this huge tree need to be taken care of better and others are in the sunshine and gets what it needs. I too wish that we could see that we're all part of the same tree and that we all could, like Leia, learn to take care of each other in order to help each other grow.